I get such a kick out of this next clip. It's Glenn Beck on his network talking to David Barton. David Barton is a guy who calls himself a historian, but really he's just a religious fundamentalist who flat out makes things up. So listen, and then when we come back, I have a lot of correcting to do. Explain why is your Founder's Bible much more important than, I don't mean it sound like that, I mean the Bible is the Bible, right. but why is this different? Yeah. Well, the, the approach that most people take to the Bible today is a spiritual book. What they did back several hundred years ago was this is a book to live by. Therefore, if you want to study history, you know that we based our free market economic system on five Bible verses. Now, we can't name them today. We know that we said these taxes are good, these taxes are bad based on specific Bible verses. We know that of the seven forms of government that are there, our founding fathers chose one out of excellence to Deuteronomy that we call the Republican form of government. came out of Bible verses. We know that our social... Ben Franklin goes through and says, here's the Bible verses on which you build your social programs. Ben Franklin is the guy who actually started the health care system in America, mm -hmm. first hospital. He did it on the basis of Luke 1035. So they used the Bible as a very real guidebook for creating an entire culture. It was not the devotional book we sit around and read today to feel spiritually warm and fuzzy. I have to tell you, you know, you just read the, you just read the Sermon on the Mount. You read the Beatitudes and you're... If, you, if everybody just memorized that That's right. and lived their life on that, That's right. the world would be a much, much better It would place. be a much different place. And, and as I'm reading, because um, uh, I'm reading the New Testament, I just start from the beginning, go to the end, and then re read it over, start Again. from the beginning, okay, just keep going over and over. And the more I read it, um, which took me three years of prayer to be excited to read it, um, I'm ashamed to say, but I think a lot of people are like this. Um, uh, as I read it in one sitting like that, you read it in s oh, cover yeah. to cover, yeah. it changes the yes, meanings. It does. And even though you know the stories a million times, it changes things. And I am just amazed at how much of a book of revolution yeah. that really is. People is. think we, we disconnect this from politics. This gives us Everything, everything that we're supposed to know. You want to talk about American Taliban? That's it right there. They're saying, "Oh no, no, the Bible tells us everything we need to know about our political system, about our economic system, and we need to implement it. Let's implement it right now. Implement the holy book." Sounds a lot like the people in Iran, you know, or Saudi Arabia. It's so funny how these guys always talk about how. They hate Sharia law and Islam. Meanwhile, they agree with them on a lot of things. You know, they would agree 100% on social issues. They agree 100% on implementing their religion to be the state. American Taliban. That's why we call these guys that. Now, let's dig a little deeper here. That guy, David Barton, wrote a history book about Thomas Jefferson that was voted, and I quote, the least credible history book in print by the History News Network. Oh, that's so much fun. That's hilarious. There, are, I don't know if you know this, there are a lot of history books in print. His is the least accurate. So you know everything he says is ridiculous, but I'll give you more specifics anyway. They say that, oh, democracy and our, the free market system and our government, it comes from the Bible. No, democracy is from ancient Greek philosophy in Athens, and then much later on we solidified, you know, the Magna Carta, for example, in 1215, that uh, really was an influence for our Constitution. Then the British Parliament in 1707, you know, that... Uh, more or less that form of government influenced how we set up our constitutional republic and our representative democracy. And the U.S. government was the first to set up an explicitly secular nation with no official state church. That's the First Amendment has the Establishment Clause in it. It says you cannot establish a religion. The state needs to remain neutral on the issue of religion. You can't favor one over another or religion over non-religion. There shall be no religious test for office. So, I mean, to say that these guys get it exactly wrong, uh, they get it exactly wrong. But going even deeper, these are guys who 
oppose every single anti-poverty program and social safety net program in existence. But they're going to sit there and talk about how they want to base the, the government off of the Bible and the ideas of Jesus. No, they don't. No, they don't. Would Jesus cut food stamps? Would Jesus cut Medicaid? Was Jesus not in favor of universal health care? Who would Jesus deny health care to? That's my question. Was Jesus uh, with the insurance companies on the issues of pre-existing conditions? Is that what he would have done? Sorry, little girl. I know you have leukemia and need treatment immediately, but we can't give it to you because WellPoint needs to turn a profit, dear. Now run along. What a joke. You know, if these guys actually wanted to implement some sort of biblical, Jesus-based system, number one, it would be goofy as fuck on social issues, you know? Pork would be banned, there would be no fish markets because shellfish is gone, <laughs> you know, crab, lobster, shrimp, etc., etc. Uh, all the clothing industries would be shut down because you're not allowed to make a mix of two fabrics, and they all do. All salons and barbershops would be shut down be the goofiest. Polygamy would be the law. That's, you know, that's biblical marriage is polygamy. Goofiest on social issues. and But on economic issues, it, we'd be the fucking most communist place on the planet. Everything would be taken care of for everybody. You know? He, I love how he said, oh, the Bible, we, we got our free market system from five lines in the Bible. For fuck's sake. The majority of the Bible is Jesus Christ walking around being as hippie as you can be. A dude with long hair traveling with 12 guys. He's single. He has facial hair. I mean, the only thing that's missing is fucking popping LSD and going to Coachella. He's a hipster for fuck's sake. And this guy's talking about, oh yeah, Jesus loved free market capitalism. No, the guy is way to, further to the left on the political spectrum than I am. I say it every day, but I say it for a reason. Jesus is a guy who makes Karl Marx look like Ann Coulter. He's so far to the left.